2024 Tacoma Buyer's Guide. There's a lot of models out there and a lot of options. I'm gonna go through the list here, help you guys decide what model is best for you and what options you want on your truck. I'm gonna keep this as objective as I can. I've expressed in the past about my feelings towards the new gen Tacoma, but this is to help you guys out. So I'm gonna keep my opinions on the back burner as much as I can. Also, before we hopped into this, I went ahead and broke this video up in the chapters based on the model. So if you're looking at a specific model and just wanna know information about that one, go ahead, skip ahead to that chapter and it'll give you all the information that I currently have about that model. Right now on Toyota's website, there are currently six models that you can pick from. The SR, the SR5, the TRD Pre-Runner, the TRD Sport, TRD Off-Road, and the Limited. Currently, the TRD Pro and Trail Hunter Edition are not on the website to be able to build and configure and have that delivered. So I'm just going to focus on these six for now. Starting here with the SR, there are two different cab options here. You can get the double cab with the five foot bed or the extra cab, which doesn't have any back doors, but has a six foot bed. Looking at the powertrain here, there's one engine option you can pick from. That's the new iForce 2.4 liter four cylinder turbocharged engine. That's gonna be the same across the board here as the hybrid option is not out yet. Keeping with the powertrain, there's a few different transmission options you can pick from here. You can get the eight speed automatic with four wheel drive, or you can get a two wheel drive, eight speed automatic. Then to my surprise, you can also get the six speed manual in the base model SR as well, with the four wheel drive and I think that is awesome. I did find out something extremely interesting when I was checking out this model and what it had to offer for the powertrain. The power is significantly different depending on what transmission you go with. They are the same engine options, but if you get the six speed manual transmission, you're looking at a big bump in power. I'm gonna put those numbers up right now. We'll talk about them. So if you pick up the automatic in the SR, you're gonna get 228 horsepower at 6,000 RPM versus the six speed manual transmission, you look at 270 horsepower at 5,400 RPM. This trend continues when we look at the torque here. It is also more with the manual. I'm gonna break that down for you as well. With the automatic here, you're looking at 243 foot pounds of torque at 1,600 RPM, and it'll begin to taper off from there. Then with the manual transmission, you're looking at 310 pound feet of torque at 2,800 RPM. That's a pretty big jump. That's a difference of 42 horsepower and 67 pound feet of torque. I think that is a pretty significant jump and worth looking at if you're looking at the manual. I'm a big fan of Toyota for offering the manual in the lowest model. My truck, for example, is a 2021 Tacoma and I got the TRD Sport because it was the lowest model offered with a six speed manual. So now that they're offering the manual in the lower trims, I think that's awesome and a great bang for your buck if you're looking for a manual transmission truck and it's kind of bare bones. Now this year around the suspension is different on different models so I'm going to break that down for you as well so you're aware of what suspension you're going to end up getting on these trucks because Toyota kind of has this a little bit hidden and you got to know what you're looking for. A lot of people aren't that mechanically inclined so I'm just trying to give you the information as bare bones as I can. So on the SR you're going to get double wishbone suspension up in the front the same suspension that you're used to on all the other Toyotas and then in the rear you're actually going to get leaf springs the same as the old Toyotas as well. Toyota designed a mini version of the Tundra suspension on some of the models of the trucks with that multi-link rear suspension, but all the SRs are going to have standard leaf springs in the rear like you're used to. You can get the SR in a few different colors, ice cap, underground, silver metallic, black, and supersonic red. And for the interior, there's only one choice on the SR and that's black fabric. When I originally made the script for this video, I was gonna go through all the packages that Toyota offers, but as I worked my way up the models, it became very difficult. I'm just gonna focus on the top of the line, most expensive package. This will round up all the different options that are available throughout each tier of package that you're looking at. So looking at the most expensive package on the SR, this is what it will give you. This is called the SR upgrade package. You're gonna get blind spot monitoring, front and rear parking assist with automatic braking, LED bed lights, and deck rails with cleats. You're also gonna get mud guards there. Most of the top of the line high price packages for the models are going to come with mud guards included. Now, as for accessories, I was gonna break down all the accessories that you can add to your Tacoma, but there's a ton of them. I will go ahead and say that they have really embraced the Overland community with all the stuff they're adding on the Toyota website that you can have included with your truck. They got Dometic fridges, air compressors from ARB, all kinds of good stuff. I was really impressed with all the stuff they had for overlanding on Toyota's website as you're building your Tacoma. On to the SR5 here. Now this has three different cab options. You can get the double cab five foot bed that we're all used to. You can get the extra cab with the six foot bed that doesn't have the doors in the back, or you can get the double cab with the six foot bed. 
Really like to see that option. For the powertrain here, you're gonna get that same four cylinder turbo iForce engine and only the choice of an automatic with four wheel drive or an automatic with two wheel drive this time around. There is no manual offered in the SR5 this time around. That being said, I found something extremely interesting. Again, when I was checking out the numbers for the powertrain. So this is the same exact engine and transmission that is in the SR, but this time around, you're getting 278 horsepower. I find this extremely interesting as the torque numbers increase as well on seemingly the same engine and transmission. The torque numbers got up to 317 pound feet on this model. That's very interesting to me. And I wonder if Toyota is artificially limiting the horsepower and torque on the SRs to get the higher price models to sell. I hope this isn't the case. Maybe the truck just can't handle that power, but I can't see Toyota manufacturing a lower end truck and not just using the same parts for all the trucks. In my opinion, I think the SR is artificially decreased using tuning to make you want that higher model with the higher horsepower and torque numbers. I wouldn't be surprised to see later on down the road, tuners being able to unlock the full power of these trucks, maybe get a lot more power out of them, or at least give you that power that the SR is capable of. Because I cannot see why the SR would be limited this way compared to the SR5. Let me know in the comments, guys, if you think there's a reason why the SR has less power than the SR5, even though it has the same engine and transmission. I'd love to hear from you guys. Let me know what you think. Taking a look at the SR5 suspension, it's pretty interesting. If you get the extra cab, you're gonna get the typical leaf springs like we always seen. But if you get the double cab SR5, you're gonna get that new multi-link rear suspension that you see in the new Tundra. It's pretty cool that they're offering this in the SR5, but you gotta be careful because the cab you pick will determine what suspension you get on the SR5. As for color on the SR5, you do get a few more options than the SR. You get ice cap, underground, silver metallic, black and supersonic red, which is a pretty cool color. The interior is a little bit different as well. You get black fabric with smoked silver accents. Now taking a look at the packages that they have available for the SR5, there's a lot going on here, but I'm gonna break it down a little bit for you and try to help you understand because it's a lot. So with the SR5 upgrade package, you're going to get a leather trimmed steering wheel and a ship knob, home link transceiver. I'm not entirely sure what that is. You guys might know better than I do. I don't know what that is. A wireless charger, and I hope that is better than the one in the third gen because the one in my truck is useless. Auto climate control, front and rear parking assist with automatic braking, LED bed lights, easy lower tailgate, and trailer brake control. There's also a cold weather package that you can add on to that SR5 upgrade. This gives you heated seats and a heated leather steering wheel. I would love to see them add a heated strip into the windshield to make sure your windshield wipers don't get frozen. A couple Subaru models and BMW models have this. It is a small strip underneath the windshield, kind of like built into the glass that heats up and gets your windshield wipers unstuck and any of that gross stuff you used to get on the interstate that kind of gets clogged up and icy, gets it off the windshield wipers like to see that. I wish I would have did it this time around. Also, you can get the mud guards as well. I'm going to try not to mention that every time because every model you can get them on there as well as I'm not going to mention the accessories because there's a ton and a lot of it has to do with overlanding and it just would take me forever. This video is already going to be pretty long. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next model. The next model here is a return to the old favorite TRD pre-runner. You only get one option cab here. That is that extra cab with the six foot bed. So you're not going to have any options for a double cab looking at this model. The powertrain is that same iForce turbocharged four cylinder engine. Looking at transmission option here, unfortunately you only get one choice and that is the eight speed automatic transmission and only two wheel drive. That's unfortunate. I would have loved to see the manual offered in this. I think a manual two-wheel drive turbo Tacoma would have been a blast. You would see some people drift in them, slam to the ground, but maybe someday down the road, you can see like an X runner, like a performance variant of this. It would be pretty neat. And in the rear on the pre-runner is gonna have leaf springs, not the new multi-link suspension system. As we move our way up through the models here, this is the first model we're gonna see with the included e-locker in the rear diff. I love to see that. That's gonna help make this two-wheel drive truck a little bit more manageable if you're gonna be doing any kind of off-roading with it. Also, with this TRD pre-runner, there's some interesting color combinations that is based off what fabric color you pick for the inside. I'm gonna break that down for you. If you get the boulder slash black fabric interior, here's the color options you are gonna get on the outside. You can get the solar octane color, which I love this color on the TRD Pro last year. I think it looked really good. You're also gonna be able to get ice cap, underground, 
silver metallic, black, and supersonic red. If you get the bolder black fabric with the anodized blue trim, which I think is pretty interesting looking. If you check their website out, that blue trim is pretty neat. You're gonna have a little bit limited color selection there. You're gonna get ice cap, underground, silver metallic, or black. The packages on this model are a little bit limited. The top of the line package includes the home link transceiver, still don't know what that is, wireless charging, front and rear parking assist with auto braking, LED bed lights, and a trailer brake controller. Hope this video is helping you guys out. If it is, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. It means a ton to me. On to the TRD Sport. TRD Sport, you have two options. You get the double cab with the five foot bed, double cab six foot bed. Now, just as we've seen in the past, if you get a six foot bed, you're not gonna be able to get that manual transmission this time around. But if you get the five foot bed, you will be able to get the manual transmission. Sticking with the powertrain is that iForce 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. And in the future, at some point, there's gonna be an option for a hybrid as well. For transmission, you can get the eight speed automatic with four wheel drive or eight speed automatic with two wheel drive. And then you can get the six speed manual with four wheel drive as well. For suspension on the TRD Sport, you're gonna get that new multi link rear suspension setup. There's no leaf springs on the TRD Sport this time around. On the color here, there is a ton of options for color, and it's gonna take me a little bit of explaining to get around this. So, a lot of the color options have to do with the interior color you pick. There are four different interior colors that you can pick from that change the exterior color. Let's hop into these colors. If you get the bolder black fabric with the smoked silver interior, you're gonna be limited to these exterior colors. Solar Octane Bronze Oxide, which I love this color. I think it looks sick. I can't wait to see it in person. I haven't seen it in person yet, but in the pictures, I really like this new color. Ice Cap Underground Silver Metallic Black Supersonic Red Blue Crush and a Wind Chill Pearl, which is a really cool looking white. Then you can do bolder black fabric with the anodized blue that we saw in the pre-runner. This is going to limit you to these exterior colors. Ice cap, underground, silver metallic, black, blue crush, and that wind chill pearl color. The next interior color is black and white fabric. With this interior, you're gonna be limited to these exterior colors, which include solar octane, that bronze oxide, ice cap, underground, silver metallic, black, supersonic and blue crush in that wind chill pearl. The final interior that you can choose in the TRD Sport is soft text. This is going to be included with the top of line package for this model as well. You can get all the colors I mentioned before in this. This is where I started to lose hope guys when I was looking into the packages for the TRD Sport. I'm gonna tell you what, there are a ton of options that you can get loaded into these TRD Sports. I'm gonna do my best to explain them and just list them all out. I'm gonna start with the top of line model so you can know what to expect and how much it's gonna cost. The top of line TRD Sport package is going to include those soft tax interior seats, heated and ventilated eight way adjustable front seats, leather trimmed heated steering wheel, 14 inch display with paramatic view, JBL audio inside, and you're gonna get that portable JBL speaker in the dash. I think that's still pretty funny. A moonroof and a wireless charger, dual zone climate control, front and rear parking assist with automatic braking, pre-wired switches if you wanna add anything to it, AC power inverter and a digital rear view mirror, trailer brake controller, power open and close tailgate and a power rear window. So there's a ton of stuff. I hope I got it all and I kind of explained it as best I could. I, I really just dug through the documentation on Toyota's website for that. And if you're gonna opt for that package, top of the line TRD Sport, that's gonna add $8,600 onto your total. On to everyone's favorite, the TRD Off-Road. You can get this in two different cab options. You can get the five foot double cab or the six foot double cab. Just like in the TRD Sport, that's gonna change your options of available transmissions for you. As for suspension, you're gonna get that new multi-link rear suspension instead of the leaf springs. And we're gonna see the electronic diff locker come back as well that we saw on the pre-runner. There is some added goodies for the off-road enthusiasts among us in this model as well. You're gonna be able to use that multi-terrain select, crawl control, and downhill assist control. There's also a good bit of skid plates offered on this as well, standard. You're gonna have a composite front skid plate and transfer case protection and fuel tank protection as well. In the off-road, we're seeing three different interior options. Boulder slash black fabric interior with the smoke silver trim, black and white fabric, and that soft text interior that's gonna be offered in the premium package. For colors, you're gonna be able to get solar octane, bronze oxide, ice cap, underground, silver metallic, black, blue crush, and supersonic red. And to save time here, guys, I'm going over the packages pretty quick and just gonna talk about the top of the line package. 
if I would sit here and talk about every package for the off-road, we would be here all day. This is already a pretty long video. So let's dive into the top of the line package for the off-road. You're gonna get mud guards, that soft text interior, heated and ventilated eight-way adjustable seats in the front, leather trimmed heated steering wheel, 14 inch display with multi-terrain monitor, JBL audio with the portable JBL speaker, moon roof and wireless charger, dual zone automatic climate control, front and rear parking assist with automatic braking, pre-wired switches, an AC power inverter, digital rear view mirror, trailer brake controller, power tailgate and rear window, and the stabilizer disconnect mechanism. That's exactly how they have it wrote. It is the front sway bar disconnect, which is pretty sweet. But all those features are gonna add $10,000 onto the TRD off-road that you ordered. The last model here is the limited, and I'm actually not going to talk about this one. I don't think anybody should buy the TRD limited. And I understand if people do, if you like that, I'm not gonna to judge too hard, but I don't wanna push people to buy that. I think it's extremely limiting on the performance that it offers. And I don't think it's really worth your money. So I just, I'm not gonna help advertise the limited. I don't think anybody should really buy that truck. Also, I cannot talk about the TRD Pro or the Trail Hunter because I don't wanna guess. And I'm just taking information off Toyota's website and putting it into a video for you guys because Toyota makes it pretty hard to understand what's going on when you get on their website if you don't look at numbers and kind of understand what's going on. I hope this video helped anybody looking at buying the new Tacoma. I hope it was able to clear some things up. I know it is tricky buying a new truck. Good luck on buying a new truck if you're in that process. Thanks for watching guys. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. It means a ton to me. We're on a road to 10,000 subscribers and we're almost there. Do me a big favor, check this video out right here. It's pretty good. And I'll see you in the next one.